Now, you did get access, but I know just reading through some of the sources and stuff in the back that you still had to change some names, and there were still, it seemed like some things where they're like, it's off limits, Ben, you stay away from this. Yeah, one or two things. I mean, funnily enough, that comes more, I think, from modesty on the part of the SAS people who were involved than any kind of national security issue. They don't want to seem to be bragging, but on the other hand, they would like their story to be told. It's the old problem with special forces people is that they love the mystique of what they do. They want it to be secret. On the other hand, they love to tell you their stories if they get the opportunity. So it's, you know, I think that is, that's less to do with sort of there being any secrets that they don't want to. One or two bits I had to be a little careful about. Some of what happened at the Iranian embassy siege is still current capability, as they call it. Some of the things that they did then, they would do now. And I agreed to keep those out of the record because I, who wants to make it easier for terrorists? I have no desire to do that. So yeah, the one or two bits I had to be a little bit careful about. But this is 40 years now. You know, this was an age before mobile telephony. This was an age before, you know, listening devices operated the way they do today. It's a quite different story. So the technology has moved on massively. 